Gentlemen, welcome back to the T. Shanley, starting a business, building your brand vlog. This one, big number 154. And woo mama, <laughs> it's been a week. But before I sort of tell you a little bit about that and get into some of your amazing questions, I want to tell you something amazing that is happening. As of today, we have officially dropped shipping for our international customers in Netherlands and India to $6.00. Denmark, Switzerland, and Israel are now $8. And so, like, that's big savings. We are constantly trying to get our shipping, our international shipping, as low as possible. We understand that we have a very large international customer base, and we feel like if we lower it as much as we can, even if we're eating it and losing a few bucks, we, we need to get it lower because in the long run, it will help us grow our international market. Um, you know, shipping's a bitch though. It's, it's a fact and it's expensive, unfortunately. And so we're doing what we can and crunching the numbers and making sure that, that we're absorbing and, and sharing in the expense and just trying to get you guys who want Tiege Hanley, Tiege Hanley, because we understand that you know, shipping sucks and it does, <laughs> but, but we're, we're trying to do what we can to lower it in every country that we can. Currently on the docket, we are analyzing a bunch of other countries, trying to get that shipping rate as low as possible. So hang with us, boys. We're doing what we can. Don't think that we forgot about you. Our international customers, we love you so incredibly much and uh, you know, sort of surprising to us, but, but our international customer base is like, I think like 20% of our overall, you know, subscriber base. And so that's a, that's a pretty substantial number. Um, and, uh, and, and it's awesome, but we're doing what we can. So now let me tell you <laughs> just before I get into these questions, just something that, <clears throat> And that has been, it, it's been a really, I've had a really hard week this week. And yesterday I'm driving and, you know, like, you know, as an entrepreneur, you're going to have crappy weeks, right? Things are going to come up. And something that, that I've learned is that the more irons you have in, in fire, the more, you know, stuff that you've got going on, the more businesses you have, the more stuff that you are handling, the higher the likelihood that things are going to go wrong and and right now there's there's a for me personally i just have a lot of crap going wrong you combine that with the fact that um we recently like like four weeks ago moved my wife's mother who is 78 years old who is suffering with dementia um, we moved her here to into atlanta from Asheville, north carolina like we got a u-haul drove up there loaded her up her and her cat drove her down and it has been just this like whirlwind ever since just trying to you know get our get our heads around and and our schedules around this like new normal and the crazy thing is that we going up there thought that she wasn't going to need all that much help we get there we get her down here and it's like oh shit <laughs> like this is this is serious and so we're having to figure all that out the good news is that she doesn't live with me <laughs> Which is something that, um, you know, a lot of people in si similar situations when, when a loved one or a family member gets old and needs help, you know, they don't have the resources to be able to, you know, put them in, in an assisted living facility. I've been fortunate enough that, you know, one of the upsides to having a few successful businesses is that you can take care of your family and you can take care of your loved ones in, in times of need. Um, so for those of you out there that are looking to, you know, be entrepreneurs, you know, and, and, and grind it out and, and suffer the, the hardships that you're going to definitely suffer and have to endure while you start a business. The upside is that when you are, you know, successful and you have some extra money, you can help people. Um, and I got to be honest, it is, um, it is one of the most beautiful things, that I, not even one of, the, the best thing about being financially secure is the ability to help people that you love. And, um, you know, another situation that, that recently happened, um, less than a year ago, my wife lost, lost her brother. I don't know if I mentioned it on this vlog. I think I probably did. Um, but a year ago in November, um, her brother just didn't wake up. He's 40, I think three or four years old and he died in his sleep. And, you know, that was really hard. Um, it was really hard on the family. And, um, you know, nobody really like he had some life insurance, but you know, they are very blue collar. He was a hard worker. He worked, you know, drove heavy machinery. His wife was a hairdresser. And so, um, 
I was in a position where I was able to help with those expenses and you know burying somebody is expensive I'll tell you that much and 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 taking care of somebody that needs needs help when they're older and need some assistance that's also very expensive and so I'm not saying that to brag please don't take it that way I'm just saying that that um, it's something to think about right I never really thought about it um, but the other thing that comes along with with this is it's my wife and I don't have children and you know I didn't realize until this kind of happened and like a month ago we moved her down here like how like sort of easy our life was right like like she went to work I go to work like we just had this like happy-go-lucky like carefree well all of a sudden in like a blink of an eye it's like we have like a special needs kid that's you know needs needs to be taken care of and that's the only real way that I can sort of explain it I guess and but that's kind of how it feels well this week she had to go to the emergency room because she got a scratch from her cat and it got infected and and so it has been so hard juggling everything um, that I've got to juggle in a week I mean it's hard enough right on a weekly basis juggling everything you throw on you know having to take care of somebody and and you know making sure that they're all right just the emotional stress it's been really hard um, yesterday I'm driving and like just the just like dominoes of shit keep falling right like all these like like landmines keep like sort of starting to explode all around me and all my businesses and it's just like I I was driving and I just started laughing I'm like <laughs> like this is honestly like it's almost funny like it, it it's it's laughable how much stress it's laughable how much crap can go wrong but at the end of the day you know you've just got to be resilient and you know one of the things that I was saying to my wife last night because she's having a really tough time she actually called me yesterday I was like crying from work she's like I'm quitting they're being a like we were both we're, we're both just like super like on edge and, and just trying to figure out what this new normal looks like and get our schedules right and, and everything and so it's just been really tough but the business takeaway to this I guess there are two you know hopefully you can be successful that you can take care of people and help them so they don't have to live with you um, not that that would technically be a bad thing but it would be a, that would be that would be hard um, the other thing is that you got to make it work right like business can't stop because you're going through some some crappy things I happen to know that Kelly uh, my business partner T. Shanley is is going through some crappy things all through T. Shanley you know things come up but you gotta you gotta make it happen you can't like just cover your head and stick your head in the sand and be like oh this is you know not deal with things you've got to still get yourself up I had to still get up and film videos and be peppy and be exciting and and do my normal stuff and, and like you gotta make things happen even when you don't want to and that is the upside to I should say the financial thing is the upside to being in business for yourself when you're successful and you finally figure it out the downside is that there is no off days you can't necessarily especially I, I should say in the situation that I'm in I'm not able to just sit in bed and wallow in you know the anxiety or just handle this I've got to handle everything and so Something else that sort of is making this even more sort of like apparent is that um, a lot of my influencer friends like Raphael from Gentleman's Gazette, Andy from Primer Magazine, Brock from The Modest Man, Baron from Effortless Gen, Eric from Beard Brand, a lot of these guys that I am friends with in the influencer space, they're away in Los Angeles staying at this like mansion this week doing this like like men, man camp where they're going through and talking about like Instagram strategies and all that. and and this happens every year and for the past two years I've been too busy to go and I know that it's a lot of my influencer friends um, they sort of I think I think they don't think I have balance <laughs> which which I don't know that I have balance very much in terms of like being able to take thing take time off and just like leave it you know and go and have fun but that's not the way that I'm wired that's not how I am and you know when I think about it like I joke with them like oh yeah you know I need to you know figure it out but I know for a fact that a lot of them 
are working basically to build a business up so that they can sort of step down, let somebody else kind of run it, and they just kind of do what they do, like go on vacations and do fun things. That's not what I want to do. What gets me up in the morning is having businesses. What gets me up in the morning is entrepreneurship and striving for betterment and striving to figure things out and striving to kick ass. And so that's what gets me excited. And so as much as it sounds like awesome to like take a week off, especially this week, and go and just kind of hang out in sunny LA and chill and kick it with guys that I really love and respect, at the end of the day, I, I wouldn't be anywhere else right now during this this time or this this week it's you know even though it's hard even though it's it's challenging i got to tell you you know it's amazing when you're tested when you make it and 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 you you know figure things out and you just you know it do, it doesn't break you and things don't break you you're so much stronger for it and i've actually been impressed with myself the last few weeks <laughs> but enough about me i'm having a crappy week Today was brutal, yesterday was brutal, Monday was even more, like it's just been, it's been hard. And um, you're gonna have hard days when you're an entrepreneur. How you handle them is up to you. And uh, I choose to press on and grind it out. But now let's get to some of your questions. Thanks for listening. The first question is from our friend Vinit Manga. I butchered it, sorry bro. Um, he says, I'm 20 years old, I'm currently studying business. I'm looking forward to starting having a business of my own. My question is, is it necessary for someone to do a job in order to gain experience experience which someone needs to run a business the answer in my humble opinion sir is yes you can take all the business classes you want in the world you can learn all the theory you can know more knowledge have more like stuff jammed in that big brain of yours than anybody but at the end of the day when you actually do the work and get smacked in the face kicked in the head with reality this is the most amazing thing and the most amazing experience you can have and you like I would rather hire somebody that has experience in whatever you know career or job I'm looking for to hire for than like just like standard like knowledge or a business degree and I have a business degree um, I have a business degree from West Virginia University and um, a minor in marketing and I have a great degree right and it's really nice I didn't learn shit in college and all the stuff I learned was nice but I really learned I, I should say I started learning when I got out into the real world I started working I started experiencing I started seeing how it really is all the stuff they teach you not all of it but a lot of it out the window get experience it'll help this is such a great this is a great question Kadar Awad says as an online entrepreneur followed by more than four four million people has your platform ever made you worry for your security and what have you done to keep yourself safe as a social media influencer with like 10 businesses I imagine you've come across your fair share of uh, strange scary people online and the answer <laughs> is you bet your ass I've gotten weird about um, about people think I've had some crazy stuff happen um, I do now have security systems and things in place that I never would have imagined I would have needed um, you know and it's sort of like you know the business thing and the influencer thing they're sort of two separate things like as the influencer have I ever been scared you know people get sort of intense and I've gotten some really brutal like hate mail I've gone to the police like a few years ago because somebody was getting really scary um, threatening kinda like me and my wife and stuff like that but the interesting thing about it is that up until recently like the whole like cyber stalker cyber crime it was it was sort of like it's really tough to prosecute somebody I've had people that have caused me business harm um, you know that have basically figured out one guy cost me tens of thousands of dollars in fraudulent orders because I had a a loophole in one of my one of my websites that he was able to exploit and um, it was it was uh, payflow it was the problem was with um, a PayPal plugin or service called payflow pro where it doesn't actually like connect like your CV code or CVV code with addresses and all sorts of anyway it was a nightmare and it and it was so scary it was horrible um, yeah you know you do what you can though you protect yourself <laughs> as much as you can and um, 
you know, but yeah, I think about that stuff because there are some crazy ass people out there. Definitely crazy ass people. Ahil Servath, uh, sorry, another butcher. I mean, I'm killing these names today. Um, hey, Alpha, uh, can you recommend good books which help us understand entrepreneurship? Unfortunately, I cannot. Um, and this is one of my biggest insecurities. Um, I don't like to read. I, I, don't even remember the last book I read. Um, this is something I think it really boils down to like when I was growing up, I went to this like hippie school my mom sent me to. And so like in like kindergarten, elementary school, like they taught me this weird form of phonics, which totally jacked me up in terms of spelling. I'm terrible with like grammar and and um, I'm just I'm just bad at that. So I, I don't read. And this is something that I've always been very insecure about. Um, I used to lie about it. When people, when I'd be like interviewed on like podcasts and stuff like that, they always, you know, would ask me like, oh, what book would you recommend? And I always like make up something. Usually it was like Simon Sinek's like start with why because I, I, I watched the, um, the TED talk <laughs> and like I loved it. But, but I'm a big fan of like audio books and stuff like that. Um, I would say that if you're looking for some entrepreneurship stuff, type books. Um, some stuff that, that, that I love is I love Gary Vaynerchuk's um, books. He has uh, Jab, Jab, Right Hook, Uppercut or something like that. He's got Crush It and Crushing It. Um, he actually, I think, just launched a new book. But, but he's really good, I feel, like in like explaining sort of the culture that in which you know entrepreneurs operate right now with with you know online businesses and social media and so I would definitely sort of look at that in terms of entrepreneurship man I don't know I'm sorry if uh, yeah here oh I figured it out <laughs> just because I'm a dummy doesn't mean that you guys are you guys are all smarter than me down in the comments What's your favorite business entrepreneurship book, guys? Let's help our friend out. Let's list them. That'll be cool. That'll be great. Down in the comments, like I said, business book, start with that and then that amazing idea. And the last question we're going to get to today is from our friend James Humphreys. He says, does it matter to you how far away the manufacturer that makes your products is from your business office? Um, this is a great question. Yes and no, <laughs> if, if that makes sense. Um, you want to be able to have it close enough that you can get there, whether or not it's, it's you're, you're flying or you can drive. Um, T. Shanley's lab used to be in Atlanta, and so anytime that Kelly or Rob or anybody wanted to visit other than me, they would have to fly here and set up an appointment. So it was kind of a pain in the ass. But now the lab that T. Shanley is using is in Chicago. And so it makes it a lot easier. It makes it a lot easier for our team to go over and do spot checks, to have meetings. And so location is good. But you're also in Chicago. I'm in Atlanta. You know, if you're in a more remote area or city, you might not have access to the lab. Um, our friend James also talks about, you know, he wants to start like a supplement company doing like pre-workouts and stuff like that. You know, you might not have somebody who specializes in, you know, pre-workouts and supplements in your area. Or there might be an amazing lab or manufacturer, you know, somewhere else, maybe in California or something like that. And so if it's specialized, if it's, you know, something that you're really, you know, needing them to do something specific and you get you know really good feelings about a lab or they do a really good job I wouldn't worry about it um, you know as long as you can get there if you need to and the truth is you're not gonna have to go all that much um, you might need to go to interview them to feel comfortable um, but other than that you know you might need I don't know you don't you don't really need to go that often and so I don't think it's a really big deal I think as long as there's somewhere you can fly to and it's not like a huge super crazy pain in the ass and you only have to do it a few times a month not a month a year then I don't really think it's that big a deal and that I think is where I'm going to wrap it up um, <laughs> because I gotta go I gotta go check on an old lady <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Not kidding. Um, <laughs> seriously. Uh, thanks for listening. It really helps me to be able to sort of talk about, you know, just stuff that I'm going through and I just wanted to share something I'm going for. You know, the takeaway I think and what I'm going to leave you with is uh, take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Exercise. Eat right. Don't smoke. Don't drink in excess. Don't do drugs. Take care of yourself. Because when your body starts to go, it doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter, you know, how successful you are, how popular popular you are. 
it doesn't matter you know your body and your health is is the number one you know thing that you've got and you've got to protect it and hold on to it so take care of yourself I know that you might be young I know that right now you're healthy and you don't think about these things but trust me I'm seeing it firsthand getting older and being unhealthy is tough and you don't want any part of it you know so just just be good to yourself take care of yourself speaking of taking care of yourself if you're using Tej Hanley on that handsome face of yours you're definitely taking care of fighting mother nature like a kung fu ninja see that's a good way to wrap it up gentlemen next week lots of exciting stuff we hired a developer that's the biggest news ever but I want to spend a little bit more time on that and maybe actually call him up next week, talk to him. This is a big deal for Tej Hanley because this is something and technology has been our Achilles heel and hopefully we are one step closer to figuring it out. Guys, a lot of great stuff happening at Tej, but the best thing of all is you. Thank you so much for everything. We love you more than our double monk strap shoes and thanks for listening to me sort of whining a little bit. <laughs> but whatever, if I can't whine to my friends, who can I whine to? Exactly. Guys, thanks for watching and listening. We'll see you next week.